Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join today. Um, we want to talk about this environmental investment yeah. plan that you all are going to be voting on later this week. Let's just lay it out for City folks. What, what are we talking about made here? a lot of plans, and I heard you talking about some of those plans, the Water Forward Plan, the Climate Equity Plan. Uh, the list goes on and on. And within those plans are a lot of goals related to our environment. Unfortunately, we are not meeting a lot of those goals. We're falling short. And so what this item does is ask the question, which goals are we falling short? And then what investments might be necessary to reach those goals or even exceed them? And so what we are doing is kickstarting that process to build that list and understand where added investment is needed so that we can come back later this year and make a determination of where we want to invest and how much. And so when we're talking about investments, I know obviously we're still, talk, we're still talking about there's going to be community input here, but what are some examples? Like what are some areas where kind of additional investment so, is likely needed in order well, to really move You know, we can forward? start with water. We all, I think, can appreciate that we do not have as much water as we'd like. And as we grow as a city, it's going to even be more and more precious. And so we have plans in place for how we can capture the water we use and reuse it. Uh, you'll commonly hear people talk about purple pipe. That is just one example or doing that at a community level where you have a new development that doesn't connect to the central system but does their own capture and reuse. That is the type of infrastructure that we can invest in. You look at some of the city buildings that have done this, the Austin Energy Building, the Development Services Building, these are buildings that were built uh, that minimize their environmental footprint. And so these investments that we make can be for city buildings. They can be for other uh, commercial buildings where we have some kind of um, cost sharing or ability to lower their environmental footprint, which benefits everybody. Because when we use electricity and we use less water, the rate payers actually save money in the long term. Uh, because Austin Energy it makes its own energy and it sell and it buys energy. So if the more we do the selling side and the less we do on the buying side, the cheaper rates are. Um, so, so I talked about purple pipe, but in the energy side, um, things like we've deployed chilled, um, chilled water loops that are essentially, uh, you can think of them as fancy HVAC systems. They're, they're ways that large buildings cool themselves but they cool the water at night and then they deploy that chilled water throughout the day to to run an HVAC and then once again rechill that water at night so that you're using electricity not during that peak three to six uh, p.m. time but in the evening. So there are a lot of technologies that we have today we just have to uh, and deploy them and do it at scale. Mm -hmm. And then what about on the climate plan side? Um, we're talking about we have this climate equity plan. Um, it was approved, you know, about two or three years ago and has this goal of um, net zero, you know, community wide emissions by 2040. You said we're falling short on some of these. Where what areas are we, you know, kind of the most behind on or that we feel like you could we really need So one area behind? is in our mode shift goals. We have a goal to have a 50-50 mode shift, where that means 50% 50 50 of people uh, in single occupancy vehicles, 50% some other means. Uh, we are falling well short there. Uh, we have a goal of 40% of vehicle miles driven to be in battery electric vehicles. We just had a briefing a couple weeks ago and, and saw how even if we achieve our current uh, goals or, or projections, we're gonna be only about halfway there by 2030, which is when this is supposed to kick in. So we need as a city to invest more in battery electric vehicles. Uh, we have goals as it relates to diverting uh, trash, especially construction related trash from landfills. We are woefully falling short there. 25% of the You, just cut out for me really quick. Let me see. Say 25% oh, yeah. of the yes. waste sentence. in our yeah. landfills comes from building. It's building materials. So huge opportunities there to not throw it away, but reuse it. Uh, these are just a few of the many examples where we need to be doing more and investing more so that we meet these climate goals. Yeah, you know, when you talk about um, electric vehicles, that feels like an area where 
you know, we're already seeing uh, more electric vehicles on the road and, and the predictions and even the car companies are saying, you know, they're only going to sell EVs a certain amount of years out. Like that feels like a, a major infrastructure project in order to allow that many electric vehicles. You have to have chargers for them and homes that can have charging That's stations exactly and, right. we need and to all of that, right? Dramatically build out our charging infrastructure. You think about how many gas stations you might drive past when you drive just between home and work and you might pass one or two charging stations. And so we need to kind of turn that on its head and make charging ubiquitous, easy, uh, and have eventually phase out the need for gas. And then, and, you know, another big part of it is obviously it's called the Climate Equity Plan. And a lot, I know, of community input went into developing this plan and trying to figure out a way that um, if we are going to be making these investments in climate, that they're benefiting those that have been, you know, historically worst hit by the climate crisis in those communities. What, um, how do you feel like that might fit into this environmental investment plan that we're using the money, not just for yeah. climate, but also to advance. Absolutely. You know, so just this past goals. budget, I uh, passed a budget rider to increase our tree planting specifically in uh, the Eastern Crescent, because we have a woefully inadequate tree canopy in East Austin and, and kind of Northeast and Southeast as well. And so that is one area where we can invest more once again into whether it's planting trees or just greenifying space that was for too long kind of made industrial or, uh, you know, not very livable or, or pleasantly um, enjoyable. But also in that area there, uh, Blackland Prairie is in towards East Austin and beyond uh, some of our wetlands. We now know that preserving these vital uh, resources or, or spaces has at least, if not a greater climate benefit than preserving, let's say, a forest. Uh, and so we need to protect our watersheds. We need to protect these open spaces that are, are the lungs of the city and help filter the water for us. And are more more often than not on the east side of town. So there is certainly an equity element that we have to remember. And also I'd say when we make investments in improving anything from people's homes, but to uh, other offices and, and building space, the people who use the most electricity are typically the lower income households who have very poorly insulated homes or, or low efficiency uh, appliances. And so if we can help those individuals by bringing a little bit more to the table, then we can also serve the equity component of, of the climate equity plan by allowing them to have at least an equal benefit. Mm -hmm. And you're talking, I know part of this too is a community engagement um, component. So if council so, passes this on Thursday, so next what would it happen? will go to the public yes. and ask them for help in thinking about this. So we have what's called the Joint Sustainability Committee, which is a kind of a super group of a bunch of our, we have the Joint Resources Commission and a bunch of other boards and commissions, but they, all the ones related to the environment have created this joint commission. And so over the months of March and April, they will solicit input from the public to both hear any new ideas that maybe aren't found in the plans or kind of help us prioritize, understand what the public is thinking about and wanting to see investments in. And then they will bring that product to staff in May. Staff will have also been working on uh, doing the analysis of our various plans. And then kind of I imagine from May to about July, they'll put it all together into that comprehensive look at where do we need to invest and then what are the available tools to pay for it. And then we as a council will make the next decision on, on what we, where we invest and how much. Yeah. So let's talk about those tools. What are some of our options? So we are we dramatically limited. The products. state of Texas does not allow a lot of uh, ways for cities to uh, make these types of investments. And I wish the state was doing more, but since they're not, uh, we have the tools available are bonds. So we can go to the voters and ask for bonds. They're um, what's called a TRE, a tax rate election, which is simply when you raise taxes uh, a certain amount. It's, it's very similar to a bond. Uh, but it just is a steady revenue stream instead of that lump sum at the front. Um, so that's both of those would require going to the voters and asking for their approval. There are also our utility rates. We can build this into 
are rates, there are fees within the utilities that you can uh, leverage. There are federal grants uh, related to the Investment or uh, Inflation Reduction Act. So there are, there are a bunch of different ways that we can pay for some of this stuff. And some, some of the recommendations may only fit into one or two of those options, right? You might not be able to put something in rates or put something up to a bond. And so we need to have that comprehensive understanding and then prioritize within that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of grants, I think the city was just awarded a grant earlier this week. Do you just want to touch on that? Let me yes, know it was that very was exciting. We got a $1 well. million dollar grant from the EPA, which was a, it's a planning grant so that we are going to work with our, um, our region, Williamson County, Hayes County, Bastrop County, the, the cities within those areas, Caldwell County, to come up with a regional kind of climate plan. And what this will allow us to do is not only have the, the same shared goals, but it will then position us for that next step of going and applying for additional competitive grants from the federal government to really draw down uh, additional dollars to achieve some of those goals. So, you know, it's important for us to take action here as the city of Austin, but the air doesn't stop at the, at the city line. And so, nor does the lake, uh, you know, only stream or flow from uh, beyond the boundary. And so it's really important that we work collectively as a, co a greater community, as a central Texas community. And so this is a really important step to help us fund that effort. Mm -hmm. And have you seen other cities, you know, we're talking about an environmental investment plan. Are there other cities you're looking to that you feel like have done this well or have figured out a way to move their climate plans forward. I mean, this is such a common problem that cities have is like you make these great plans and then they kind yep. of sit on a shelf, right? They don't always happen. Yeah, so Denver recently passed out there. Uh, a funding mechanism for, to achieve some of their climate goals. The state of New York has recently invested dollars to, to reach a bunch of their goals. Uh, we have seen various municipalities from across the country do this and you know, we certainly want to have a positive impact on the global problem that is climate change. But what I want to make sure doesn't get lost is by taking measures here locally, we can have local benefits, whether it is simply making sure we have enough water to drink in 20 or 30 years. But also, you know, I have two, I have, two, I have three now very young kids. I just had my third a couple months ago. I'm, I'm not used to saying three. Uh, I have very young children and I want them to be able to go to the playground and A, it not be so hot that they can't even go down the slide, but B, that the air is clean for them to breathe. You know, we have seen more and more children develop asthma and other health uh, complications because the air is not clean. And so these are real things we can do at a local level to improve the quality of life and the to any skeptic out there, the best or I'll say for, for any skeptic, if you, if we do it right, it saves everybody money. So not only does it improve the quality of life for everybody, but we can save ourselves money in the long run because we're gonna spend money on climate change. We either do it now to mitigate it or we do it later to deal with the negative effects. Well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat today. And again, for folks, that council meeting is on Thursday. You're going to be voting on. And then if it passes, people should keep an eye out. I'm sure we'll share the opportunities here when it becomes available for some public input and engagement. You got it. That's, that's exactly right. We want people right? to participate. Let us know what they're thinking about. And can't wait to move forward. Great. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time to um, chat and thank you everyone for joining we'll place a recording of this um, so in case you miss any pieces and again we'll and keep sharing those links for thank you sorry thanks for being patient with me on the Instagram live <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. have a good one <laughs> bye bye